microgram trip report, posted to the LSD subreddit two years ago by the user Giftwilling. I'm still tripping pretty hard. I took this at 8pm, and as I'm writing this, it's 3.26am. For those interested in the details, anyone that sees my post history will know I'm a seasoned psychonaut, and know that I'm not bluffing about dosage or the things I'm about to share. 8D music is absolutely insane to listen to at this dose. It was like being at a super crisp clear concert. It was like my consciousness was a 3D sound wave, and I became this sphere of sound. The sound was absolutely insane, and that was with regular AirPods. For you guys wondering, I swear to god the visuals for the first three hours were overwhelming. An hour in, and the sacred floral patterns were so overwhelming I couldn't see my hands anymore. It's incredibly beautiful and divine, however. The patterns in sacred geometry are overwhelming at peak. It's almost some DMT level stuff. A beautiful, terrifying sight to say the least. It can be extremely confusing as to what you're seeing or what's going on. Your reality is incredibly fractalized, whether your eyes are opened or closed. The peak was absolutely terrifying. Things got extremely weird and ego dissolution was unavoidable, as expected at this dose. I remember stumbling into my bedroom and getting down on my knees and thinking to myself that I was grateful to experience life and have a consciousness in the first place. It was by now that the sacred geometry and fractals were extremely overwhelming. Sounds were melting together and my body felt nearly non-existent. I got this visual of a feathered creature with eyes all over the wings. This creature was gargantuan in size, it literally spanned miles and miles, and there were millions if not billions of eyes. I had seen biblically accurate angels before, so this wasn't necessarily deviant. However, this one that appeared didn't have the same divine presence I was used to feeling with other angels, such as the Wheels Within Wheel or Ophanim angels I saw in 400 micrograms or a beautiful six-winged seraphim I saw in 1300 micrograms. This one was different though. It started giving me all this knowledge. At that point in time, I literally knew everything and anything. It was crazy. The answers weren't what I thought they were, and it was insanely surreal. I was everything and knew all of existence. I was amazed at how this being was able to give me so much information at once. We started talking, but the conversation became insanely weird. I can't even recall what they were about, but we discussed these super abstract philosophical concepts. Literally conversations beyond any fathomable concepts any man could conceive. I don't even remember how the conversation went verbatim. I just remembered this all ending with the feathered creature telling me all this could be mine if I accepted I was God. I told him I wasn't God, and it argued back several reasons why I was. He started to become aggressive, and after I rejected his proposal, he literally spent what felt like literal eons torturing me, going through every single bad thing I had done in my lifetime, and mentally tormenting me about it. I literally remember looking at the time on my phone, which said 10.27, and this pathetic demon or Satan himself was dragging me back into this timeless eternal hell of torture, keeping me trapped in this timeless mental loot pit. I was literally stuck here for a literal decade, if not centuries. I'm not even exaggerating here. I was hyper aware of everything that was happening. Every single moment. Every second between a second, this evil demon tortured me for every sin I had committed. It told me in the most intricate ways how I couldn't be forgiven and there was no way out. I looked up again to see only one minute had passed. It was 10.28. I'd taken this 800 microgram dosage with a few close friends and girlfriend in our apartment. We were all intoxicated, but I was the only one on LSD. While all of this was happening, I appeared normal to everyone that was there. They only perceived me as staring off into space occasionally before regrouping with them to continue our conversation. Under the surface, I was fighting this interdimensional mental battle with this satanic being that was abusing me forever. 
After what felt like ages, it eventually left me alone, angry that I didn't want to accept its teachings. The rest of the trip was incredibly pleasant, I must say, and the come down was a great reliever to that hell-like peak I'd just been through. I had an amazing time of everyone that was over that night. Nine hours in, I still have involuntary synesthesia, and my body feels like it has very undefined boundaries at times. Those that trip will know what I'm talking about. I'd say at the moment, 4.18am, my come down looks a lot like what a 300 microgram peak would look like. I will say that I made a huge mistake treating 800 micrograms as a recreational dose with friends around. But I must say that while the set and the people that here tonight were amazing, this was definitely the wrong setting. Everyone was getting fucked up and high, and I took this drug having the let's get high mentality instead of my more cautious outlook with acid that I normally use. While some moments were incredibly euphoric and heavenly, I had a scary peak that taught me a lot more about this substance that I thought I already knew everything about. I went in a bit overconfident and cocky, thinking since I had a dozen trips, including a 7 gram APE trip under my belt, and acid trips ranging up to 400 micrograms, that I could probably handle my shit at 800. I had taken an accidental outlier dose of liquid LSD at 1300 micrograms that was actually super incredible and positive. That's what initially made me want to explore and map the territory I missed between 400 and 1300. So initially I didn't think there was harm at starting somewhere approximately in the middle. As stated earlier, while on the surface I appeared as a normal person, or as normal as someone can appear while high as fuck tripping, there was so, so much going on internally. I now understand why someone would kill themselves on a bad acid trip. I was really grateful to have friends and an amazing girlfriend to keep me roped into reality. Shit could have gotten very dark if they weren't there. While this wasn't necessarily a bad trip, it had moments in it that were terrible. I literally experienced heaven and hell on this trip. It made me develop a lot more respect for LSD. While I've always had respect for psychedelics, I'll make sure to keep in mind to definitely watch the set and setting carefully next time. This was the first time I ever treated acid in a recreational setting with the intent of getting lit with my friends, thinking I could handle it all based on past experiences, and truly got my ass handed to me. Please treat acid with respect, even if you're experienced with it. Set, setting, and intent, these all play huge roles in how your trip will play out. It took me quite a while to type this all, and it's now 5.22. The trip is reminiscent of a 200 microgram peak and fading visuals. I'm sorry for any grammatical errors. I'm high and very, very tired. I just thought I'd leave some little extra comments about this report. Um, there was an interesting comment by the user Wart Jockey that said, Damn, should have just admitted you are God. And Gif Willing replies with, I'll be honest, it didn't sit right with me, man. I'd much rather prefer the cosmic ass whooping than to ever admit that, but to each their own. What Jockey interestingly replies with, I mean, to me, we're all one breath, all wired into the same place. We are all one, and we are all God. Even the Bible hints that we are made in His image. It's just us, it's just me, it's just you. Uh, a user that, del that deleted their uh, account replies with, This is an interesting take on believing that you're God, and it doesn't have such a delusions of grandeur feel to it. Rosalia1234 replies, I view it similarly to you. God is everything, it's life, it's the trees and animals, everyone is God. I don't view God as a one person. It's so much grander than humans can even imagine. Uh, this really piqued my interest because... If anybody who's been listening to a lot of these reports over the years knows that I do focus a lot on the God realization, mystical experiences. And there's a common thread between a lot of the ones where people don't let go. Now, well, this begs the question before I open it up, is that what is God? 
I mean, we talk about this a lot, and I'll probably do a video just talking about my own opinions on it, because I guess everyone's sort of understanding of this is going to be flavoured by their experiences through life, their upbringing, the culture, and etc. It's very hard to sort of get to the truth, if there is even is a truth with a capital T, the absolute truth. Um, but I think it's important to note that this guy could have had a continuously beautiful experience, most likely, if he did just give in. But then again, it also makes you think that the reason he didn't give in is because, like he said, uh, he doesn't recognise himself as God. Does that mean that he is God and that we're all God and that denying that in that moment, the only thing that can sort of break you out of that is to get tormented in a sense? Because, uh, again, a lot of... Uh, spiritual teachings imply that suffering is a, a mechanism that breaks you out of sort of the ego in a sense and this torment and torture that this guy went through from this angel whether it's his projection of his own mind or an actual entity it was sort of trying to wake him up in a sense in an extreme manner and this can happen a lot in these trips uh, anyone who's listened to these sort of similar experiences on the channel knows that that's a common theme throughout a lot of the experiences where people are unable to let go of their sort of subjective relative self and give in to their, their metaphysical sense or their highest self. Mm, it's a lot to think about and I've also had experiences, the one when I ran around Manchester naked, there was a, a deep element of not being able to let go of the finite self. And there was a glimpse of this higher, this higher state of being that I am when I'm not this form. So obviously, I think you'll probably gather that I am a. I hate to say believer in God. Belief belief has a very has a lot of connotations to it. Sort of, it makes you. It makes you think that, oh, you've got faith in it. And I, just based upon my own experiences in life and just every single aspect of my life that's molded together and research of humanity and my own consciousness and these mystical breakthroughs that I've had, it, it, it feels wrong saying I believe in God. It, it sort of feels like I'm saying I know God. But then this obviously will attract a lot of people who give it, will, will project that delusions of grandeur aspect onto your perspective but for anyone who's been through stuff that I have and I, I mean many of these people I put on these a feature on these trip reports it would be sort of a a lie to say they believe in God it feels like you know and become God in these states and even when you are in your finite self you are still God because God is God breathes life through everything and exists through every single thing all at once. Mm, yeah, this is a, it's a very tricky one to deconstruct and pick the pieces apart and put them into a cohesive whole. But uh, I guess it just says that we're all on our own journey. And um, I don't think... I obviously don't really need to be a believer in God or religious or anything to experience these things. That's why I think there's a truth to it because... I was an atheist, I was completely convinced that there was no God or source or interconnected life stream, universe with a capital U, any sort of way you want to describe what the word God is pointing towards. The fact that my whole paradigm was shattered through these mystical breakthroughs and experiences that felt so real and so truthful and profound, I can't really deny that in my own experience, I know God. You might not know God in your own experience. And this isn't me telling you, oh yeah, God is real, this, that, and the other. Because if it's not real for you, then it isn't. When I was an atheist, it wasn't real. But then now it is real. There is an element of paradox to my own worldview. And I must acknowledge that I don't really know anything. I don't know anything about the eternal mystery that is life, the universe, and even what I really am on, a, on an absolute level. But on the other hand, the paradox is that I do personally, within my own worldview, recognize myself as a fractalized, limited version of God, which implies a sense of knowing. So there is a sense of knowing, but it's 
limited, but higher than what I used to grasp, if you get what I mean. Yeah, a lot to unpack with all these uh, God realization, mystical experience type reports. I think at the end of the day, what really matters is that no matter what worldview you have, is it giving you a sense of fulfillment? Is it growing you or are you stagnating? You can know yourself as God through these mystical experiences and psychedelic breakthroughs, but is it fulfilling a deep element of what your soul or what you really want out of life and is it making you happy? Is it giving you a deeper connection with life, reality and yourself? If it's not, then you know better really than the atheist who has no belief in God or has, has had no experiences that question that and is getting a fulfillment and satisfaction out of life and is doing good stuff for himself and the world. So it's a tricky one. It's relative. Different for everyone. Like I say, we're all on our own path and I hope you all figure it out. And as for myself, I love this sort of stuff. Even if it all turns out to be not true in the end and I was completely wrong, the world's come 100% physical, um, it's just atoms and all this, then who cares? It was the most beautiful thing in the world. So yeah, hope you're all well. Also, one thing before I go, I just wanted to briefly plug my Patreon and I think I get a one-off ticket for this because I only really advertise it in the beginning of the videos in the text, which uh, I don't think is effective really for inspiring people to support the channel. Uh, I just wanted to say if you like this stuff and you'd like to see it get better, please consider supporting me on www.patreon.com slash Vivek or join the YouTube membership or donate to me on Ko-fi. If you don't want to do this, it's completely fine. I'll, it'll never, never sway me from producing the content as consistently as I do to the best of my ability. But uh, what would be really good is that the Patreon money or any of the stuff, any of the support that anyone gives me, uh, I do feed any all of this back into the channel and make sure to use all of that support and get and get new microphones. I got this new microphone a few weeks ago, got the GoPro with it, uh, literally just everything. And I'd like to get, a, I know how rough some of the audio is in the shed talks where I just talk face to face on the camera. I'd like to get a new microphone, get some better software and just pour as much of your generous donations into the channel and make it better and make it better for you as well so if you'd like to do that please consider checking the link down in the description but if not we'll keep hammering away at these super profound experiences and my own personal anecdotes that people enjoy somehow because i just think i'm ramble on far too long as we have seen in this video because we're now at 18 minutes 31 seconds anyway have a nice day and we'll see you on the other side